Rabbi Kaplan, Elul Tov. Maybe you have a few words for us. Anything on your mind? I wanted to talk something that I was in the last few days. A certain that after mitoch, a certain you read the Adachizuk. What does that mean? Now I have a gadget that's called, what's it called, an iPhone or a smartphone, or I don't know what it's called. Xiaomi, Xiaomi phone. A what? It's called Xiaomi, and I forget the number. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. So, so I got it uh, closed up. I shouldn't be able to see the YouTube. So I came to Yetzirah. And he made, uh, in the middle of the night, the, the closing up, the sealing up, uh, stops. So it opens up, so the YouTube opens up so you can see things. Came the HR and he made me look at things. Now, I want to say like this. I saw there's a woman that she has a, it's a series of, uh, what do you say, how do you call it, articles or talks or whatever, interviews, and, and, and her name is Julia Hart, and she went off to Derek at age 40-something. What was her story? I didn't read the, listen to the whole story, but she was married, got divorced. Who had she married to? Also, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear I didn't listen to everything. And uh, she seemed to be mad. She, I heard her say she went to Basiaku. She said her parents came from Russia, but she's American. She talks like an American. And is married and had five children. And she seems to be that she ran a regular Jewish home. Came a time later. She went off to there. Now, why should I be mitjechis to such a woman? I haven't been talking for months or years all of a sudden because it's cooking in me. What what's cooking in me? The 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 what's it called? Uh, the, it's like this. Comes up now. Uh, before I go on. Let me just mention, and then I saw there were two couples, room couples, Haredim, that answered her. But the answer, you're wrong with this because of this, and you're wrong with this because of that. And they come to explain. The first one, their name is Solomon, a man and a wife. And they explain that women are not second class citizens. Uh, you, you complain that the Torah made women second class citizens. No, I'll explain you that they're not. It's, it's what's it called in English? There's a word apologetic or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll apologize for you, this guy, the women are not really second class citizens. Now, so somebody could always say back, no, I see that they are second class citizens, that we know by name, no that they are second. Depends each one, when, heck, actually, these slogans. Every person has what, 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 what he, how he understands it. What does it mean, second-class citizens? Does it mean like Jews in, in Nazi Germany, that they were second-class citizens? They weren't allowed to sit on a bench, where, or they weren't allowed to go to go to a theater. That's not what the, we're not talking about that. First of all, Somebody that's smart, in my in my in the way I look at it, somebody that's smart should be a first class citizen, and somebody that's stupid should be a second class citizen. Does that mean you have to be not nice to him? No. Well, he, he, there there are levels, and the, the 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 less smart person is. I mean, the Rambam says it's all the whole world was made to be mishamish to the. The tzaddik, uh, they built the whole building, says the Rambam, in order that a tzaddik should walk by on a rainy day and, and go under the roof over there to, to guard himself from the rain. It's all made for the tzaddik, the whole, the whole system. Does that mean for everybody else is, is, is worthless? No. I'm not, I can't explain every nakud, and I know, as in, in previous times it happened, that people didn't 
didn't understand what I said. But I feel, but I'm not talking to to, to to a lot to the masses. I'm talking to the few Yehidim that will understand what I'm saying. Now, um, now, what are they saying? Is so she complains? This woman, she went to Beis Yaakov and she learned enough from school, and she ran up from home. One morning she woke up. Oy, women are second class citizens. Where do you see that? I don't know. Maybe because they don't go to school in the morning. Maybe because they're not chayv and mitzvah as he says, my grandma. Or maybe because they don't have bottom midrashes for women. Or maybe because the the from world women go out. Being businesswomen less, actually nowadays I think they're more, but women less go out than men, so they're second class citizens. And yet we have Hillary Clinton was a woman, our first class citizen, we see what a marshaz, a ruro she is. I don't if she would have become a president. So... So she woke up one day, this woman, this Julia, and she said, what? We're second class citizens. Boom, let's throw everything away. Shabbos, Kashis, Nish, we'll throw everything away. Because we're not going to let that Torah tell us what we are. We're not going to let Hashem tell us what we are. We're going to fight back and show the Torah and Hashem that we're first class citizens. So what did she do? She was alright, all and broke away from everything. And the main thing, what's the most important thing? biggest pleasure that she has that now she could wear sleeveless clothes and the neckline should go all the way down low that you could see the breasts and the skirt should be very high that you could see most of the leg wow amazing freedom we're free we don't have that terror to limit us and tell us what we should cover and what we shouldn't cover. Uh, that's called a grown-up, I'm asking you. Uh, we, we have a story in our tradition that was brought in this form that there was the Spanish Inquisition. And... It was uh, quite a few years that it went on, and Jews were burnt at the stake, and they were driven away from Spain. They were put on boats and driven away, and they were, and they didn't take with them too much. There was a family, a father and a mother and two children. They went on a boat, and the boat took them wherever it took them. They were starving, and they were thirsty. And the boat reached an island. They got off of the boat to go on the island. Maybe they'll find some food. The father said to the wife and children, sit here and wait, and I'll go look for food. He went and went, I don't know if he found or didn't find him. And he comes back and he sees his wife and two children lying there dead. From starvation and from heat, I guess. They died, they couldn't hold down. And he was left alone, one person in the world he was left. And he turned up to Hashem and he said to Hashem, you think, you Hashem think, you're going to make me such sorrows, and you took away everything from me. You think you're going to be 
stronger than me and force me to break away from you. It's not gonna work. I'm never gonna break away from you. I'm gonna stay with my Abba to you no matter what I go through. That's what he said to Hashem. We, can, we can't imagine what kind of Nachas Ruch went up in the high in the sky from such talk and maybe we're still living nowadays from the Kedusha of those words. That's greatness! Losing everything. All because I'm a Jew. Yet, I'm never gonna break away from you, Hashem, no matter what you do to me. That's a great person. We don't even know who he was. Comes along a woman in front of America from nowadays. Life didn't treat her so good. I don't know what happened to her with her husband. She got divorced. Things didn't go so smooth. Ah, Shem, yeah. You're trying to put me in a Nisa. And I'm so weak, I'm going to give up. Boom, I'm going to drop everything. Yeah, 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 you made it hard for me. I'm only going to worship you when it's easy. And when it gets hard, I'm not going to be with you. Don't, don't think you're going to test me and you're going to make me work for you. Ah, you're, you are worthy to be worshipped, but only when it's easy. When it's hard, when I don't understand, when it doesn't make sense, when you don't let me uncover parts of my body, and then I feel like, I do feel like uncovering parts of my body when you do that. Okay, I don't need you. Goodbye. What's that called? Cotness. A small, small person can't make an effort for you to skate. Can't fight against the Yates or horror. Can't overcome hardships. Can't overcome situations that don't make sense. You, you want to make you this good? Okay, there's plenty of goyim out there. I'll join them. That's what this. And then this woman goes around with her self confidence and with a smile. I won the don nuts. Look how I dress. I'm, they're not going to tell me to cover my body. And she says, My body belongs to me. This is Mamish Derech Agif. Machlok is the... I signed the Sefer Laura Allah from Rav Zevin that he brings. Shulchan Aruch Rav says your body doesn't belong to you. And you that's why you, you're not allowed to be chauvul bats and not to hurt yourself. The Minchas Chinuch says no, as far as you can hurt yourself and your body does belong to you. So that every maven understands that that doesn't have to do over here. So... Well, Rav Kaplan, Rav Kaplan. She says it all started because she had a little girl and the little girl wanted to learn singing and dancing and they thought that you can't because it's going to make bad, bad thoughts in men. So the little girl says, so why do I have to be responsible for men? Let the men take care of themselves and be miscabber on their yates or by themselves. What do I have to worry for them? Ooh, a big question. Every child knows the answer to that question. Everybody who learned a little bit knows the answer to that. But when you're looking to break out and to and to be free, so it's a big question. Why did it uh, first of all? If somebody has a problem with Yiddish kid, it doesn't matter. Why can't the little girl learn singing and learn dancing? So you go to a smart person. We hope there are such people. Or you come to me. And, and, and you ask the question. The truth, I don't know what's wrong. I really don't know what's wrong with a little girl learning singing and dancing. My, my two granddaughters, my daughter started to has they went to learn ballet and they and they performed in a in a place for women and 
needs to take everything with her. Who told her that you can't? This time I don't understand what it takes. So she comes from a different place from Hasidim. Maybe she comes. To, so I don't know who whoever told her this. But but let's say that they told her this. So it's a problem. It's a serious problem. We feel like teaching the child the singing and dancing and. And and then the men don't let. So what do you do about it? Bothers me. Like, isn't there somebody you could ask that can explain it, that can satisfy you? <laughs> make uh, maybe there's some way. Maybe there's a way to find a a head to, to. If Yiddish cat is important, so you have to throw it away because of because uh, somebody made it hard. Somebody made it hard, yeah. Somebody made Yiddish kind of hard. So, so there's, so yeah. So it's a problem. Like, let's say, somebody has, uh, he wants to make a lot of money, and it's hard. <laughs> it's a simple case. So, so what do you do? You, you go ask advice. How do you make money? There are plenty of people who give advice in these things. How do you make money? Can you become rich? Or, or if other other problems that, that things don't work out in life, so you go ask. And if you still don't find the answer, they go to a from psychologist, and and you talk it over with him. And other, but they, they, I mean, I can understand that after you don't find any solution, that you can fall into a huge and something could happen to him. But somebody with full self-confidence, and they say, okay, it didn't go, says, I see you, this guy is a little bit hard. So, okay, goodbye. But you, you tell her, think that you're gonna make life difficult. No, I'm gonna give it you a kick and finish. That's greatness. That's intelligent, an intelligent person. That's a grown-up, that's what you call childish. Doesn't look childish, but it is. What happened to, to Aesop? Aesop came in and he saw Yaakov Avina was cooking a soup of, of Adoshi. He said, what are you doing that for? So he said, Mesa Zok, and the old man died. Savrom so Avinu died. So I'm making this for the Avelus. Eat it in the Shiva. All he said, Mesa Zok and Les Din was dying, finished. There's no Din, no dying, I'm breaking away everything, said Aesop. Something in life happened. The fact that Avomo Vinu died, that does not make sense that Roma Vinu should die. Doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. Goodbye. Don't need it. Give a kick and finish. From that came out of eight seven. From that came out all the sir. Always with love. He saw. He was in the house of a Roma Vinu, and there was a fight between the Roe Mikne of Rome and the Roe Mikne Lot. So then uh, Avram said to Lot, look, let's separate. So what does it say? By ye shall load me, Kedem. Lot said, I'm going away from Hashem. I'm going away from the Kedmonu Shalom. Yeah, she, look by Avram, for look by Lokov, I can't have this goodbye. Where did he go? He went to stop. Didn't go the way he wants. It's not, and I once heard from a certain Darshan that he said, he couldn't, he saw he can't live in the house of Avram Avina. The language is a different language. They don't talk about styles over there. They don't talk about how to make money over there. They talk about how could you get closer to Hashem. It's not the language of a lot. Now what he, he wants to be in the world. Ye salute me, Kadam Yevshi, Obarum Lobelukov. Comes this woman, and she starts talking against 
אבל השם המשיך אגנסט אתר אגנסט יידישקייט. She said and she dresses uh, with a, a preacher, what we call preacher's dick, uh, you know, to show your chest and to show your arms and to show your legs and that's, and that's all. Does that mean that Yofi beauty is, is my, my limbs, my skin, my, that, that's beauty. It's not. Somebody said, and uh, the Queen of England, did you ever see she dressed like that? Never saw that. Even a guy understands, and the daughter-in-law, you'll see there's pictures, the daughter-in-law of, of the Queen, what's her name, uh, the, the wife of, what's his name, the, uh, I forgot what his name is, the first son of her, the, anyway. So, so she, she, she's dressed uh, not like Gomri Tzniestik, but not telling cover. That's not Mal- Malchus. is COVID. COVID the autumn. They also understand that the goyim over there. So, but she's complaining that Yiddish God made it hard for her. Comes now, these people, this Solomon couple and this other couple, I forgot what their name is, they're answering her. No, women are not so, so second class citizens. And the other one explains, why is it a man can divorce a woman, a woman can divorce a man? So I give a whole explanation. You think, but you're naive, you people. I know you mean well and you're trying to answer. But you're naive. This woman is trying to fight against Hashem and against this Torah. So what are you giving an answer? Oh, no, Hashem was right. Yeah, and what about that? I can't eat chazer and I feel like eating chazer. Why can't I do what I feel? Maybe chazer tastes better. What are you going to answer then? You're going to give a whole explanation. Who says she even deserves to have an explanation? Just just to be me. What I'm saying, I'm, I'm going down to the shorish of the old story. I'm going down to the roots of the story. The roots of the story is, it's too hard and I want it easy, very simple. And don't tell me that there's such an oversimplification like the upper class intelligent people talk like that. At least those that I know. Uh, oversimplification. Yeah, it's oversimplification because that's all it is. There isn't anything more deeper than that. Uh, there, there, there was a famous story, Rabbi Yosef de la Reina. The, can't go into the whole story, but the story is broad in different forms. There's some suffered. Uh, there's Miramis to it, and I saw the Cosmic Rabbi talked about it. It's a, he wanted to bring Mashiach, and he fasted and fasted, and he used Seamus Akadoshim, and he was able to catch the Sutton and tie him up with a string, and he was going to take him away to some faraway mountains and kill him. And the Malachim warned him, you're going to get into trouble. Don't get in. Don't try. No, no, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. So they told him, if you do this, be very careful. Don't give this sultan anything. If he asks, if he asks for food, you don't give him. Have no Rachmanis on him. And if he asks for drink, don't give him. And the Sutton and his wife, he caught them both. He was leading them away to a place where it's gonna, where he's gonna end them off. And the Sutton was crying and crying. And we're hungry and we're thirsty. He didn't listen to them. He didn't do anything. Finally, the Sutton said, okay, you don't wanna give me food. At least give me to smell some tabaks. Like they call it in Yiddish a schmeck tabak. You take two fingers and you put it in and you smell. That's the smell of tabak, give me. They gave him this, this drop.
cup of tabak that you take and you smell. He gave him. As soon as he did that, the sudden burst open his chains, and he took this Rabbi Yosef and he threw him away someplace. And the whole plan was messed up and didn't work out. That little bit, because he was makriv to shmek tabak to Abu Dzora to the sudden, he gave this sudden this little, and that messed up his whole plan. And from then on, uh, could be he went off to there or nothing. I came of him. Now. These people, I mean, these people, they mean well when they answer this woman. But I'm saying this, they're giving it, giving her a shmek tabak for, for this. She's a shliach of the Sutton, Sutton Center. She says, and it's, as she says, well, why does she go public? And why does she might give these talks? To help others. Help others from what? To help others that Yiddish kind of presses them. She's gonna teach others. No, be a guy. You won't be oppressed if you'll be a guy. Dress. Don't get dressed. Just go half naked in the street. You'll feel free. You'll feel good. That's good. I, I, what, you're, you're closed up in your community? I'll teach you. Have courage and break out, and that's called helping others. That is what the Pesach says in Shmuel. Vayelech elav agag madanosh. When, when, when the show fought the war against Amalek, he left the Gagag, the king of Amalek, he left him alive. Because he looked at him and he saw, he has good midis, he's a gentle person, Matanos, soft, gentle, nice. And he couldn't bring himself to kill him. And what happened from that? That night he made pregnant a shifra, and from that came out homo. Of course, on the other hand, like the Nesivas in the Akdomet of Miguel Sester, he says, we have to be thankful to show because of him we got a yomtev of Purim. But Tadikim said that even though the Gzair of Lashmit Largalabit was bottled then, it stayed, and then six million were killed by those children of Amalek in the later generations, all because Shal Tharu is a gentle person. I can't bring myself to kill him. That's what's over here. This woman, she looks, uh, she, she looks, uh, she smiles when you see all her teeth, and she's confident about herself, and she explains her war against Hashem and against his Torah. So what are we going to give talks to explain why the Torah is right? And and what it's, you have, I mean, it's going to help with Hashliach of the Sotan that came down to this world with the sole purpose of fighting against Hashem and against his Torah. So these explanations that you have is going to help something. It's so naive. It's like giving this Sutton that that Shmek Tabak and uh, and saying, oh, you have a point. I'm going to answer. I'm going to explain. I I would say what I say is you have to go to the root of the problem and explain this. Now, now, uh, 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 what, what, uh, Besides that, she comes on with her daughter, and they're both dressed in the most open way. Uh, so, what, so what's Shaykh answering? What's Shaykh talking? The kids are, we're holding an equal.
Because the Mashiach, the lowest of the lowest, right before Mashiach comes. And he's the worst, the worst is to go to Goyim and give interviews to Goyim about what's wrong with Jews, what's wrong with the Torah that Jews have. Can you imagine something worse than a Hashem more than that? I mean, that's, I, I would say, it says that Yoshka, how did he become a Yoshka? He was a, because he made a, he did a certain mistake that on the way coming back from Alexandria to Eretz Yisrael, with his Rebbe of Shobem Prachia, so they stopped at a certain inn, and the woman there were, treated them very nicely. Rishon ben Prach and said, Kama noe isha zu. He meant her maishim are so beautiful. So the Yoske said, Avay nel trutus. Her eyes are not so, don't look so good. So he said, Rosh, we kachata osik. That's what you look at. I wonder, yeah, Rav Chaim Shmulevit used to say, you say, Rosh, you think that that's what I mean? You want to look at her eyes is one thing, but you you think when you're talking to me, and that's what I meant when I said, come and know Isha Zu. You understand that your Rebbe doesn't talk about these things. You were you doing that, so what are you mixing the Rebbe in? So he said, so he, so he, so he went out and he became a Yoshke. Later on he wanted to do Tshuva, so he kept, he didn't accept him until... Finally, one day he was already ready to accept him, and he was in the middle of Krishna when he came in to ask to be accepted. Bishub and Prache made a motion with his hand that that he should wait till he finishes Krishna, and he didn't understand that motion. He thought he's pushing him out. They went out, and he made his own religion. And from that came out so many tars to Klal Yisrael. All because he didn't understand what his Rebbe meant. And he thought his Rebbe is not accepting him. Let's say the Rebbe didn't accept you. You have to go create a religion and make such tars for Jews in all generations. Because he didn't accept you. That's what you do. Yeah, that's what a small person does. A person with a small brain does that. He wasn't accepted by his Rebbe. First of all, if the Rebbe didn't accept you, he said, go into a shul and learn without the Rebbe. I go to a different place and open up your own basement or something. You have to give a kick to the whole Yiddish kid and make your own religion which does which nothing makes sense and and with that was Taurus at Sofka Taurus and Taurus said yeah that's what a small person does that's it what's it gonna help explaining and explaining and explaining not gonna help anything this is the same like what Yoshka did and having a good time, but she makes it look like she's having a good time. First of all, she married somebody, and that person, I think he was a good. And then she thinks that he promised to let her children in, and he says he didn't promise to let her children in. Then more that he didn't let them in, so she filed for divorce, and what? I don't know what happened, I didn't hear the whole story. But the kids are, he cut her off from his business. I can she still looks like this so confident and so sure she found the right there, the light, the life, she found the life and she's going to help others. You know what this help, this help for others means? What's all this nafkamina to us? We have to always remember and we forget it all the time. Life is a war. There's 
sometimes things happen that don't make sense in our own life. Things that don't make sense. Why does this have to happen? I myself, I ask, especially now that I live alone, I keep it keeps coming to me, the question. Why did it have to happen to my father that took me out of the Shivik when I was 13 years old and he learned with private what did he get out Kaplan. What? Speak louder, please. What did, what did I get from it? Nothing. It just made me more and more confused. Why did it have to happen to me? Why did I have to go to the mirror and I didn't understand what's going on in this shit? Everybody else did. Why did it have to happen? We ask ourselves. And we get down and I said, I'm talking, I don't know about others, I'm talking about myself. But life is a war. We, we're soldiers. I heard a talk from Rob Shaw. Alter was giving a talk. He said, we are soldiers. A soldier gets beaten. He can either continue the war or he can surrender. But to give up, he can't. There is no such option to give up. And that's what we have to learn from all this. Sometimes things don't make sense. And sometimes others seem more successful. And we don't understand why are they more successful. And we're talking in their Yiddish case. We can ask these questions and we can understand this. We have to wait until there will come a time. So then we'll understand, but meanwhile, we have to just go on and keep fighting the war. And Hashem will help that soon it'll be. Bala Moshim Baratzin, Lishpo Desarezov, to judge the Arezov that they did this to call Yisrael. They are the ones, the Aesop, he's the one that brought this situation that we're seeing nowadays of people going off to Derek, which is a new thing. We haven't seen this for years and years. They're going to, the Moshim is, it says it means Moshe ben Yosef and Moshe ben David. They're going to judge the Aesop. The end is going to be the Hoysel Hashem That's what I wanted to say. Okay, Rabbi Kaplan. Good night, everybody. Okay, thank you. Let's